I'm going to start with the examiner. Facing uncertainty, um, Carty and Byrne could pip Carberry to World Cup spot, and Sheedy must be a bit like Garth Brooks, thanking God for unanswered prayers, says Kieran Shannon uh, over his piece today. What have you got first up? <coughs> yeah, we have uh, the Irish Indo. Um, referee got it wrong with sending off, insists Richie Hogan. Schmidt said to give Byrne a World Cup opportunity. So we've got that Irish uh, rugby team being named this afternoon in Portugal for the England game against uh, uh, Twickenham on Saturday. So Ross Byrne said to be number 10. Um, Villa Sack, ex Ireland assistant uh, Kevin McDonald, with immediate effect over allegations of bullying from some of the club's former players in the 1990s. Younger players like the Gareth Farrelly member was very critical of him. Uh, back page of the Mirror. Uh, end disgusting racism. Maguire urges social media giants to crack down on sick trolls after Pogba's latest victim of vile abuse. Jack and Ross said to get a chance to impress the story about the rugby. An amazed Hogan on his red. No way it was sending off, of course, on off the ball last night. Hogan stand, the best headline I've seen about it, Jer. Um, no way it was a red card. Talk of an elbow was crazy. This is not Irish dancing, and I can't retire on that note. Yeah, plenty for uh, people to sing their teeth into from our Richie Hogan interview on Off the Ball last night. Uh, Richie's rage, I don't think he was raging either. Um, Hogan hits out at red, it's not Irish dancing is the headline on the back of the mail this morning. And they say they have an exclusive United Seek Twitter talks following racial abuse of Pogba. And there is uh, Carty gets the edge on Byrne. So uh, they're saying Jack Carty and Ross Byrne uh, sitting back to back yesterday. But um, is it not Ross Byrne who's going to start? Well, Rory Ro Ro O'Connor is saying that Byrne will get it. Ireland women's captain slams dinosaur duo. Ireland captain Kate McCabe has hit out football legends Graham Sooners and Glenn Hoddle as dinosaurs for their outdated attitude towards the women's game. What else? No prisoners taken as final decisions in A versus B games made. This is about the dubs in 2017. The B team beating the A team by a point just before the All-Ireland final. So <laughs> this is what's going on right now in Dublin senior football ahead of the Kerry game on Sunday week. So that's the 2017 final? The Mayo game when they right. won by a point, Dean Rock slayed free. Is that, um, that's when Connolly comes on? Yes. So, is that why Connolly didn't start? Is that why Ono Gara started? Did he play really well in that game? Uh, the B4 division, I haven't read it now fully, but it looks something like this. Niall Scully, Dermot Connolly, who did come on, Paul Flynn, Cormac Costello, Bernard Brogue, and Kevin McManaman. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's quite a good story from Conor McKeown in the, in the back of the, uh, the Irish uh, Herald today. Um, the, I paraphrased the uh, <coughs> quotes from uh, the skills coach, Richie Murphy, out of the examiner this morning. I'm a bit more worried about Joey Carberry than I would have been a day or two ago, given the quotes I saw out of Portugal yesterday about his fitness. And I would get the sense that they're worried about it, that with whether he's going to go on that plane or not. And that's why Byrne and, and Carter are going to be tried out now between now and, and the, the Wales game in Dublin on September 7th. But it, 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 wasn't, as, it wasn't concrete that he's going to be on the plane. For me. It's hard to justify him being on the plane unless you're absolutely certain he's going to be back after the first game. Now, that's one way of looking at it. The other way of looking at it is that, as we were saying with Ron Nogara the other day, the teams that end up doing well in the semi-finals and finals who go deep into the tournament don't have their first team. They have players who have come into the squad late sometimes to kick the winning drop goal or they have players who were absolutely substitutes when the thing started, but because of injury and because of loss of form. So, do you carry somebody along who you know can get back to health and ultimately you will be able to use... In a quarterfinal, or onwards. In, or, or even like the, the last game before the quarterfinals. So if, if he's yeah. just back for the last game before the quarterfinals and you're hoping you're going to make the quarterfinals irrespective of who you're playing, obviously we know, one of the, we know which two teams are potentially we're playing and they're both great, and can you win that game without Joey Carberry? Or right out 20 minutes to go with Carberry. Yeah, and I'm not sure. So I um, think he needs to be on the plane, personally. Um, it, it, it seems like it's a risk, but unless the injury is more severe than we've been told, yeah, which has happened yeah. in many instances before yeah, uh, when yeah. it comes to professional sport. Get real, Hogan hurling isn't Irish dancing. Everybody seems to agree on um, that being the first takeaway. This is the Suns take on Off the Ball Story at Richie Hogan uh, interview with him last night. Penalty kicked. Ollie loses the rag. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer tore into Paul Pogba and Marcus Rashford over the Molyneux penalty for us. So, um, obviously... Why didn't he say... Why, why didn't he designate a penalty taker beforehand? That's... Um, 
I don't know. It doesn't make that much sense. That's him. Every time I think of this Irish dancing, I'm just thinking of Father Ted and Graham Norton. Every time I hear that that headline uh, this morning, I'm just thinking of the lads with the kind of the, the hands by the shoulders, you know, just dancing away. The uh, back page of the Racing Post is a preview of the FedEx, and they're saying Patrick Cantlay is prime for FedEx glory. Do you agree with that, John? Um, I was Justin Thomas man. Uh, unfortunately, he won last week. I know somebody who did a Tipperary Justin Thomas double, but I didn't. Uh, so uh, I'm holding my powder now until until the jump season. Okay. Uh, Racing Post World Class, the highest rated horse on the planet, Crystal Ocean, kicks off four days of sensational action in a mouthwatering clash with Japan. Um, it's at York this after the Ebor meeting. Always a good meeting in August if you've got a bit of spare time. Uh, <clears throat> the Times, London, Smith fails to recover in time for test. Australia blows concussion, rules out talisman. And uh, police to help United catch Pogba trolls is the story on that one. The Guardian has that uh, Smith story as well. Bouncer, war, no thanks. Australia wary of fiery response as Smith ruled out. And uh, the Rugby Players Union has called for urgent action to protect players' mental well-being following stark warnings from Kerna Mail, the former Waston England Saxons forward. So mental health is a big issue uh, in rugby. And uh, finally from me is uh, Gordon Darcy. I'm worried. I think we all are. We need a sign. And then uh, time against Carberry is Ireland. Take a look at Plan B is the other. Yeah, so that's Jerry Thornley down in Quinta de Lago in, um, Portugal. In, in Portugal talking about that too. So obviously word is beginning to seep out that maybe Joey Carberry isn't fit enough to... Well, like, what you said there is, yeah, like... Do we know how injured he is? I think that's the, that's the key question. Yeah. Um, but, well, I think we'll learn a lot more today when Joe actually speaks. And what the prognosis is. Yeah. Um, just on, on Michal Dunhu, he had actually agreed a two-year extension after the league. So it looks like something has changed. It's a hard graft. Like, like I don't even I don't know if we even know that Liam Sheedy will be back next year in Tipperary. It's just it's I think <laughs> he will be. Yeah, he's it's a 1965 it, thing. Uh, but it is it's 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 a lot of time, a lot of commitment, and four years is a, is a long time. And I think Michal, I think just probably it's just a, if he's just decided, uh, you know, I've, I, I want to go back to to civilian life as it were and uh, give somebody another go. Maybe yeah, kind of view on it. I, I mean, he'd be a good pundit as well over the uh, yeah, the next yeah. while. Good yeah. to get some recent experience. Yeah, and I, I remember you brought the uh, said, um, Lucas, the, the the Polish trainer in there, the strength and conditioning guy. He was a uh, he was involved on Irish rugby as well. He was he was hugely influential as well. Um, but yeah, it's not easy to, to win all Ireland's and not even to get easy to get out of round robins. But I think Galway will be there, part of the conversation next year with Limerick uh, as well as Tip. Yeah, so um, people are saying that Jeff Linsky and Maddie Kenny are among the favourites to succeed. I guess Brian Hanley must be in that conversation yeah. after winning uh, yeah. minor all Ireland at the weekend as well. So um, look, we'll talk with Cyril Farrell in a couple of minutes about that and see exactly what his take is on all of that. Uh, here's some more Richie Hogan speaking to Joe on last night's show. Somebody said to me, I think it was yesterday, that um, they were talking about an elbow. Any talk about an elbow there is absolutely crazy. Um, my elbow does not connect with them at all. My shoulder absolutely does, or that your arm between your between your between your shoulder and your elbow. But I mean, is it, they spoke about your arm not being down beside your side. I mean, this is not Irish dancing. I mean, we have we have hurleys in our hands. How do we hold a hurley which is which is thirty six inches long if your arm is not bent? Um, my technique and shouldering was completely right. It's just I didn't hit his shoulder. And that's and that's absolutely the way the way it worked out. I mean, my elbow doesn't connect with him at all. I, I felt I felt the connection when when, when I did run past him. Right. Because um, you know the and, angle, uh, you know the fourth angle, the one from behind. That there's the, there were different angles of it. There's one from behind, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that, I that's the one where it, of, it, of it afterwards. But I mean, that's the is, one where it looks I mean, like the elbow catches him. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, to go through to go through four or five angles and say, oh, this is the one here that shows um, that there was a connection of this part. I mean, what about the other four angles? I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I, didn't, I didn't understand that. I mean, if you look at it again, mm. I lean in, I actually lean down in with my, with my shoulder and uh, his head is down there because he had taken a, a side step. That yeah, day. he checks um, back, yeah. But I mean, this is, you're talking about split second, uh, split second stuff here and I mean, you know, you're you're really you're really splitting hairs. It's uh, Richie Hogan speaking with Joe last night. You can get that wherever you get your podcasts in full. The best place to get it is offtheball.com this morning. If you've missed any of that interview, it's worth giving uh, over the full half an hour to just listen to the whole story of Richie Hogan's season. He uh, also talked about um, doing his media ligament in the game against Limerick and not being able to, challenge, to train at all in advance of the All-Ireland final and uh, <clears throat> still to be picked 
by Brian Cody shows you just exactly how highly Brian Cody rates Richie Hogan. Um, I think everybody rates him as a, as a man after coming out and uh, discussing exactly what happened at the weekend as well.